Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals with us, the hour for revival. I'm your brother and the Lord, brother Ray Char. It's always the hour for revival. Glory, hallelujah, Father. Hide me behind the cross. I've been under me, but all of you. Spirit of this declaring and by leave here singing, I got just what I wanted from the Lord and more in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to wait for a few people to tune in this morning, and we're going to get started. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, somebody tuned in and tuned off. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on back. Hallelujah. Bless God. Hey, Sister Regina, God bless you. Good morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. She tuned in today. Glory to God. I'm going to wait a few more, for a few more people to tune in. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Good morning. Hallelujah. Bless God. Hallelujah. I'm going to entitle the message today... Uh, from the ashes, you will rise. From the ashes, you will rise. Hey, Brother Corey, God bless you. Hallelujah. I'm glad you could tune in, Brother. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30, verses 3 through 19. I'm going to break this down for you today. From the ashes, you will rise. There's a lot of people who feel like everything in their lives just been burned up and burned out. But let me tell you something. God is going to raise you up again from the ashes of everything that seems like it was sent to destroy your life. Hey, Brother Patrick, good morning. God bless you. Hallelujah. Sister Mary, God bless you. Kimberly, God bless you. Hallelujah. Good morning. Hallelujah. Turn with me. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 3. Amen. From the ashes you will rise. Amen. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him left, lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. When you've wept till you can weep no more, God is about to perform a miracle. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You cried till you can't cry no more. Now God's going to do what he does best. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to perform a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. They were in a place called Gilgal. They were in the place called Gilgal. Now, the name Gilgal means to wear down. How many of you feel today like you're wore down and like Gilgal, you're burned out? There are so many today that feel that way. They feel wore down and burned out. But I'm here to tell you, by the Holy Ghost of God, there's a resurrection in your midst. And from the ashes, you shall rise. Thank you, Jesus. You will rise. Bless God. But it said the people wept with David. And David's two wives were taken captive. Ahinema, the Jezreel, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Camelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because their soul, the soul of the people, was so grieved, was grieved, 
every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord God, in his Lord God, the Lord his God. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Good morning, Sister Angel. Hallelujah. When it looks like everybody else that was weeping with you now turns against you to take you out, God's saying, weeping may endure for the night. Weeping has its place, but joy cometh in the morning. Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody say amen? Joy cometh in the morning. Hey, Sister Carla, God bless you. God wants people to know whatever you've been weeping about, whatever's been troubling your heart, God wants you to know that from the ashes you will rise. Somebody say that with me this morning. From the ashes I will rise. Share this message with everybody you know needs a word from God this morning. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stone in him. The same ones that came to mourn with him are the same ones that got ready to throw the first stone be cut. Mm, I love what Jesus said, though. Jesus, somebody say Jesus said. And Jesus said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. There's a lot of people who think their life is more better than yours and they want to take you out of the equation but let me tell you life would not be better without you god needs you in this life that's why you're here today i'm preaching to somebody who has a spirit of suicide around them shed my kasaya whoa hallelujah God's going to deliver you from the hand of the enemy. Do not give up. Do not be burned up and do not be burned out. For God shall raise you up from the ashes. Come on, somebody. Can you give God an amen? And David inquired of the Lord. First thing he did was he praised God in the midst of his situation. Then after he praised God, this ain't even the meat of the message, y'all. After he praised God, he began to look over things with God and say, God, what's your plan in all of this? Show me where your destiny fits in for my life. If you don't know your destiny, ask the one who created it. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Don't go to no witch doctor. Don't go to nobody who don't know your destiny. Go to Jesus. Rabbi was telling me a story recently about somebody who went to a soothsayer. And they wrote this letter and said, do not open it until after you get down the road. They never got to open the letter because they were killed in a head-on collision. Listen to me now. The family knew she had went to this witch doctor. They found the letter, and inside the letter from the accident, it said, you have no future. The witch put a curse on her, and her life was over. Why? Because she consulted a woman with a familiar spirit. She consulted a demon instead of a deliverer. Instead of the deliverer, she consulted a demon, and the demon took her out of this world. Don't play with witchcraft, friends. Thank you, Jesus. What am I saying? What has that got to do with this message today? The wrong word from the wrong person can destroy your destiny. Oh, I hope I'm helping somebody out here this morning. Because from the ashes, you will rise. Thank you, Jesus. David inquired of the Lord. 
The Bible said we are to pray without ceasing. Continually pray without ceasing. Over and over and over in our spirit. We are to pray without ceasing. And David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the fod, the ephod. And, wait, he said, bring me hither the ephod, the priestly garments. And Abather brought there, thither, the ephod to David. Now look at this. There was only one man that was anointed in the office of priest, prophet, and king, and that was David. When David went in hung, he was anointed prophet. Because the Bible says in the New Testament, from the words of the prophet David, and he wrote several messianic songs about the Messiah that was pinpoint accurate concerning Jesus' life. Now, Jesus is the great, great, great grandson of David, and listen to this. He also is the Redeemer, so him being related to David, check this out, David was priest, prophet, and king, okay? The Bible said that Jesus came in the order of Melchizedek. What am I saying? There is a certain order that God has set in motion and has ordained. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Because look at this. Jesus had John the Baptist as a cousin. The, the, the John the Baptist, the cousin, was actually a priest and a prophet. And he anointed the king. But let me tell you, the Bible shows us that we walk in these offices of the Lord, with the Lord, because of one reason. It shows us in the Bible three places. I'll get this into a different message about priest, prophet, and king. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, David was anointed priest, prophet, and king, the only flesh and blood man to walk in all three offices. When God has appointed you and anointed you, nobody can really disappoint you because even when you start to get disappointed, God says, I'm going to refresh this anointing, this calling, this will that I've got on their life, and it shall be established. It shall be done. Don't give up. Don't give in. Just give it over to God. Whoo, glory to God. I hope somebody's getting this. But David was anointed priest, prophet, and king. When he put those priestly garments on, the ephod, it was a priestly garment. He said, I'm going to get to worshiping God like a priest. I'm going to praise God like the priest because he was anointed as priest so he gave God a priestly praise oh there's it there's the message title a priestly praise the Bible says that our worship is as a sweet saber under the Lord it's a priestly sacrifice unto God because the Bible said we've been anointed priest unto God I know this is a deep message, but that's all right. It's tight, but it's right. Amen. Thank you. I ain't got but a little bit of time here with you this morning, so I'm trying to rush and bring everything together before I bring the climax of today's message. Thank you, Jesus. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue out of the troop? Shall I pursue? For thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Look at this. He's saying that you're going to fight the battle. I'm going to hold my peace, and you're going to fight this battle for me, God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus is our king. He's our high priest. There you go, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you, the Bible said that Jesus is our king. He's our high priest. Thank you, Jesus. And we know he prophesied. The Bible says that Paul wished above all things. that the, He said, I wish all God's children prophesied. All God's children can walk in the prophetic anointing. That don't mean they have the office of a prophet, but they can walk in the prophetic anointing. You can begin to declare the word of God over somebody's life. It don't have to be something hooky spooky like, well, thus said the Lord. It don't have to be that. You can declare the word of God over somebody's life and you're prophesying, speaking into their life. We got priestly duties in the kingdom of Almighty God. Amen. Let me explain this to you. We are kings and priests unto God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Thank you, Jesus. That's the point I was trying to make earlier. I know some people probably got lost in that translation. But I'm trying to tell you by the Holy Ghost of God, you are anointed and appointed for this time. You got the priestly anointing. You got the prophetic anointing. And you got the kingly anointing. God has chosen you for this generation or you wouldn't be here today. Somebody needed to hear that this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So David went. So David went and he had the 600 men that were with him and came to the brook Basor where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and 400 men for 200 abode could not go over the brook Basor and they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water and they gave hey yes now let me explain this to you Jesus is the bread of life and the living water sometimes when you don't think you can go any further you just gotta get a hold of a little flavor in your favor Get a hold of a little flavor in your favor. Glory to God. When the odds seem to outnumber you and the odds are not working in your favor, get a little flavor in your favor. Thank you, Jesus. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him. For he had eaten no bread nor drink any water three days and three nights. And David said unto him, To belongest whom belongest thou and whence thou art? And whence art thou? Now wait a minute. He had fasted three days and three nights. What has that got to do with anything? He fasted three days and three nights. This guy didn't even want to eat. He couldn't eat. He felt bad. He felt sick. And he couldn't eat for three days and three nights. Sometimes God will have somebody fasting for you, and they don't even know they're fasting for you or even why they're fasting. They just can't eat. They just don't got no desire to eat. Don't worry. Something ain't wrong, baby. God's got you fasting. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. When it says his spirit came back to him. Now I noticed something. When Jesus raises somebody from the dead in the New Testament, every time they're instantly hungry. I've seen it with deliverance every time. When somebody gets delivered from demon spirits, after they get sick, they turn around and say, I'm hungry because there was something that was malnourishing their life that was binding their blessing up. But when that devil finally let them go, help me, Holy Ghost, thank you, Jesus. When that devil finally let them go because of the word of God in somebody's life, their nourishment had returned. They needed nourishment. When Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, he said she is hungry. Get her something to eat. She, I believe, she 
had actually slipped into what we call a coma. But Jesus said she is not dead. But asleep. And I believe that it's very possible. Because the Bible said he, he didn't rebuke death. He said, little girl, get up. It's time to wake up, is what he said. And he grabbed her by the hand and pulled her up. Because if she was dead, he would have said, I rebuke death. He would have, it would have said that Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. But it said Jesus healed Jairus' daughter. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I get in trouble for that one a lot when I'm, I reveal that revelation. Hallelujah. And he said, I am the young man. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou, and whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, a servant to Amalekite. And my master lent me, because three days ago I fell sick. Mm. God allowed this man to become this way for one reason, because God needed a spy. God needed somebody who knew the territory that David was going into, and God said, I'm going to send somebody to wait for him. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. We made, we made an invasion upon the south of the she writes, and upon the coast which belongeth to Judea, and upon the south of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God, the living God, Adonai. He said, Swear to me by Adonai. Hey, he believed in God. That's a miracle in itself that an Egyptian believed in the true God. He said, Swear unto me by God that thou wilt neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring thee down to this encampment, to this camp company. And when he had brought him down, behold, there was spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing, because all the great spoils that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judea, the land of praise. Lord, have mercy. Some people today need to hear this. Though the enemy stole your praise, God is sending you back in the midst of your enemies, camp. and guess what's going to happen? And David smote them from twilight even until the evening of the next day, and there was scattered not a man of them save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled. Wait one minute. And David recovered all that the Amalekites carried away and David rescued. And David recovered all. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm so glad I got hecklers on here today. Thank you, Jesus. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. It said twice. that David recovered all. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sister Lillian. Glory to God. From the ashes you will rise. At the time, I'm going to deal just a little bit of a background for a word from God real quick. At the time, there was wrote... And this was wrote, Ziglag was in ashes from a fiery attack. But from the trial by fire, from this ashes, God rose David back to his feet. Now listen to this. It don't matter what fiery furnace you're facing right now, what kind of ashes you're facing, 
I want you to know it is well, and from the ashes you will rise. Now, there is some fires God will bring you through without even the smell of smoke upon you. Daniel 3.23 talks about that for the Hebrew children in Isaiah 43 and 3. But sometimes you've got to go through the fire because there is a... Because there is a refining fire, Malachi 3 and 8. But don't worry, because from the ashes you will rise. I'm here to tell you by the Holy Ghost today. Thank you, Jesus. From the ashes you will rise. I hope somebody's getting something out of this message today. Remember, God said he'll give you beauty for ashes, Isaiah 61 and 3, because in the time that that was written, they was in mourning. And he said, no more mourning, no more crying. He said, I'm going to give you beauty for ashes. The word beauty in its original Hebrew word, it means headdress. He said, I'm going to take them ashes from off the top of your head and put something beautiful in the place of mourning. I'm going to give you a miracle. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost, because weeping had endured for the night, but joy has come in the morning. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Whoo, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, just like in that tent that we've been doing the, doing the meetings, God has showed up every night. Fire has literally been seen under the tent. Souls have been saved every single night. People have been delivered every single night. Last night, the enemy showed up and tried to make a scene. The Holy Ghost rebuked the enemy right there under the tent. The man who was in witchcraft left. I heard him as he passed me by say, I can't take this no more. And he walked off because the anointing of the Holy Ghost was so strong under that tent. Not even the warlock could stand against the anointing when he rose up to speak evil of the power of God. He could not stand because of the anointing. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Let me tell you, God is saying no more ashes. I'm giving you beauty for ashes. Joshua put ashes on his head in mourning. Joshua 7 and 6. One more thing I want to show you, though. God allowed a sacrifice that happened. David set up a sacrifice of repentance before God for allowing something to happen in the camp that he wasn't supposed to happen. He wasn't supposed to number the people, and he did, and, and death became fallen on the people, and he repented unto God, and he went up and bought, this piece of property, but the guy said, hey, I'm going to give it to you for free. David said, I don't want to give God that which costs me nothing. He said, I've already paid too much. Thank you, Jesus. So the man allowed David to buy it. God received the sacrifice. Fire fell because David was also in the office of a priest. Remember now, he was wearing his ephod. If you go back and read it, he was wearing his ephod. He made a sacrifice just like the mm, priest would do. The fire of the Holy Ghost fell. God consumed. The, the Bible says he sacrificed that offering. God received the offering, and from those ashes, his son would use that piece of land that his daddy bought, and upon it would build the temple of Solomon, which was the house of praise, was rebuilt. Upon the ashes, praise rose up.
Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That happened in 2 Samuel 24, 23. And upon... Those ashes, the son of David built the house of praise, rebuilt the house of praise from those ashes. And from the ashes, you will rise. How does that help you today? Go to 1 Peter 2 and 8, uh, 1 Corinthians. Sorry, go to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 3, verse 11 through 15, and I close. Thank you, Jesus. I hope somebody's been blessed this morning. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. For other foundations can no man lay, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, 1 Corinthians 3, 11. For other foundations can no man lay, then that is laid which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon the foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built, Thereupon he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet saved as by fire. What am I saying? From the ashes you will rise. From the ashes you will rise. Even on that day, God's going to raise you up from the ashes. Thank you, Jesus. Because the Bible says our God is a consuming fire. But he also makes his ministers flames of fire. I'm getting ready to give an altar call of fire. I ain't done this in a long time. But every time I do an altar call of fire, that's what God told me to call it. His fire shows up. Literally, I am sweating in the glory of God right now. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Please share this message, everybody, who you know needs a word from the living God. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. I know sometimes I go on rabbit trails, but if, if you just stick with me, I eventually get you where you need to go. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. You know, uh, let's see. Uh, Dad Hagen called it soul journey. Soul journey. I'm going to take a soul journey here now. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. If you've built your life on the things of the flesh, if you know there's things in your life that would not last if God put it to the fire today, come get it right with God right now. Make an altar where you're sitting. If you're riding down the road, pull over and park. And, and get out and get on your knees before God. Let everybody see how humble you are before God. Humble yourself before the presence of Almighty God, and He will exalt you. In due season, you will reap a harvest if you faint not. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. I found out the other day these messages are being played in bars. I've got a bartender who's one of my subscribers. I didn't know that. And they're playing these messages in a bar. So that's really cool to me that the gospel's being heard in this one guy's bar. Thank you, Jesus. So if you're in the bar right now and you're listening to me, Put the beer down, get on your knees before God. Bow your heart. Rip 
your heart and not your garment. Amen. Repent of your sins. Say, Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe you died upon the cross that God the Father raised you from the dead. I put my life in your hands. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm no longer my own, but I am yours. Take me, use me, cleanse me, whatever you want to do in my life. Here it is. Fill me with your spirit that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Holy Ghost, thank you, Jesus. If you prayed that prayer with me, write to me. I want to send you a certificate of sonship. Thank you, Jesus. It's a certificate that certifies what happened today happened in heaven. That your name is forever sealed in heavenly places and you are a blood-bought child of the King of Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Now, if you're sick in your body, I curse every devil of sickness. I command it to loose you and let you go free. I command create a miracle right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bind every spirit of infection and infirmity in Jesus' name right now by the power of the Holy Ghost of God. Thank you, Jesus. By the power of God, I bind every spirit of infirmity. I command to loose your body, loose your mind, let you go free in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Now, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every devil of bondage. I command to loose your mind and let you go free by the power of the Holy Ghost of God. Freedom in their mind, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Give them peace. Give them freedom, God, in their mind. In the name of Jesus. For he who sends his free is free indeed. And Lord, you said you give perfect peace to those whose mind is set on you. Lord, I thank you for doing it now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, freedom. Now I'm going to give the altar call a fire. Remember, according to them, one nine, the attack cannot come back, and he who says it's free is free indeed. We seal your healing and your deliverance with the blood of Jesus upon the doorpost of your heart. Now get up there, go out and testify, because we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, I hope somebody enjoyed this message this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, God. Lord, do it right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, baptize them in the Holy Ghost and in fire. Baptize them, Lord, in the Holy Ghost and in fire. Lord, let them never be the same today. I'm giving the altar call of fire. 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 Washing the water of the word. Cry, their belly will flow rivers of living water. Rabba mama kashaya. Do it now, Lord. Rabba mama kashaya. Rosha bakosaya. Fill them up, Holy Ghost. Shara baba kasata dadiya lando robosaya. Rabba mama kotosaya. Le maba handai. Rabba boko shoha. In Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Ghost of God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Now, if you have been touched by God, write to me. Let me know what God has done for you. Kid Henry, K I D D H E N R Y 617 at gmail.com. I want to celebrate 
your new life with you, Robert uh, Kid Henry K I D D six one seven gmail dot com. Thank you, Jesus. Write to me. Let me know what God's done for you, Kid Henry K I D D H E N O Y six one seven at gmail dot com. Bless everybody, Lord, for tuning in and those who are going to recap and retune in after this message is ended today. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Hallelujah. I'll be here in the morning, 8.35 a.m., bringing another word from God to you as well. And then Sunday, under the tent, I'll be preaching Sunday morning. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Y'all don't want to miss that message. It'll bless your life. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For those who desire to give, we now have PayPal. The link will be at the top of the video for those on Facebook. The bottom of the video for those on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR. It's always the hour for revival. I'll see you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.